Welcome to part two of the Global Weather and Climate Report, edition 58. It is a tropical special. I think last weekend was as well, but the, the tropics are really driving the weather globally at the moment here. And we've had a couple of significant episodes of rapid intensification, both over the Atlantic with Hurricane Lee. It has currently weakened, but it may ramp back up again. Also, we had Hurricane Jova in the East Pacific. Went from a, a tropical storm of 40 mile an hour to a monster 130 mile per hour Cat 4 hurricane within the space of 24 hours and it actually went to Cat 5 strength within a 36 hour period. You can see here this infrared loop showing the remarkable growth of um, of uh, Hurricane Jova, of course, in the East Pacific. We also seen tremendous rapid intensification with Lee going from a tropical storm to a Cat 5 hurricane, essentially within a 24-hour period as well. So some pretty remarkable stuff at the moment. And that is likely down to the incredible warm sea surface temperatures globally at the moment here. These are the current sea surface temperatures at the moment. You can see here 29 Celsius against the uh, African coast to uh, low 30s as we push into the Caribbean, which of course is fairly typical for this time of the year as well as the Gulf of Mexico, of course, super typhoons, um, the strongest globally tend to be uh, in and around the Philippines area. We've got water temperatures here of 29 to 30 Celsius at the moment. And of course, we have removed some of that heat, ocean heat content along the Southeast China coast in recent times due to one or two major typhoons coming ashore or a glance and glow. Uh, typhoon Siola, for example, I don't necessarily think it made landfall on Hong Kong, but we've seen, of course, and as discussed in the previous video, uh, some re record breaking rainfall, tremendous amounts of flooding in and around Hong Kong and adjacent areas. And of course, what with mountainous areas as well around Hong Kong that exacerbated the flood situation here. So uh, a very, very uh, active time at the moment when we look at the tropical Atlantic and also in conjunction with our weather pattern. Now, of course, we had Franklin, uh, which I believe helped deliver a week-long heat wave across the British Isles, which is about to end in the next day or so. Now, it already has ended in the northern and western portion of the UK and indeed Ireland, but the southeast of the UK holds on to 30 degree weather. It looks as if over the next few days, we will eventually see the temperatures coming down tomorrow. We may hit the high 20s as opposed to 30, 31 Celsius, 32 possible, maybe even 33. We did see 33.2 uh, Celsius recorded at Kew Gardens in London uh, yesterday. That is the UK's warmest temperature of the year so far. But of course we've got Lee, and we've got the uh, Margo. Uh, thankfully, somebody corrected me. I said Margot, uh, but it is Margo. And we need to keep an eye on these two systems here, folks, because they may have significant impact later down the road in our weather. Of course, Franklin, I believe, boosted high pressure over the UK, Ireland, and indeed Europe delivered the extreme pattern with, of course, the two areas of low pressure trapped either side of the Omega block and high uh, over Central Europe, of course, we've got uh, record warm temperatures in, in northern and western portions of Europe at the moment here, flash flooding, Greece, parts of Iberia. But of course, it's all eyes on Hurricane Lee. It has weakened and it is uh, likely to re-strengthen over the next 24 hours, 36 hours, back to major status again. I think it's currently at 105 mile an hour sustained winds. It did undergo a little bit of weakening due to westerly wind shear, some winds coming in at the at the surface from a east southeast direction, but in the mid and upper levels we had winds coming in out of a southwesterly direction, and that's been kind of shearing and disorganizing the structure of Lee, but with weakening shear we will see a, a regrowing of the strength. Over the next few days now we do have a trough that is over the that's pushing eastwards over the united states at the moment and it is going to be all about the timing of lee and its northward turn to the west of the uh, the bahamas 
and indeed the exit and trough moving east northeast over the eastern United States. Now, the slower that trough is in conjunction with that northward turn of Lee, we could see the system uh, track a little bit further west, closer to uh, Cape Cod and the far east of New England, up into Maine, possibly into the front western fringes of Nova Scotia. Or if that trough exiting uh, eastern North America is a little bit quicker, and the you know Lee's northward progress is slower, we are more likely to see the system turn um, and, and have little impact, if any, on the northeastern United States. I think we are going to have impacts in Canada, whether it be in Nova Scotia or Newfoundland. This is Margo, as you can see here, and you can see Lee very little in the way of an eye at the moment due to that shear coming in from the west. We also have a system over the southern caribbean sea at the moment that we need to keep an eye on uh, as well here but you can see here if we look at the east pacific the infrared loop here there is the remnants of jova over the far east of the uh, the east pacific here at the moment so we don't have um really much to talk about with regards to jova but the rapid intensification of these uh, hurricanes or uh, you know cyclones typhoons whatever you want to say, depending on what ocean basin you're looking at, has been pretty remarkable in recent times um, and in recent, uh, you know, the last seven days or so. Pretty amazing stuff, actually, with regards to this. And it is a lot to do with the incredible warm sea surface temperatures that we have at the moment. Here. In, in conjunction with the Westpac at the moment, the conditions have indeed eased off a little bit. We don't have a tremendous amount of uh, activity. We do have areas of low pressure floating around at the moment here. If we look at the West Pacific, you can see the situation at the moment. Plenty of shower and thunderstorm activity within the tropics at the moment here. And you can see here, as we look up towards Japan, we do have some heavy rainfall across central and southern portions of Hokkaido. Down towards uh, Okinawa, we do have showers and thunderstorms, but nothing particularly organized at the moment here. If we play through the loop, you can see here that we just have this ongoing shower and thunderstorm pulsating, uh, you know, diurnally um, day, between day and night. No organized areas of low pressure that develop here. We do have a feature that moves uh, northwards off the east coast of uh, Japan. As you can see here, we've got some areas of low pressure just to the southeast of uh, or south of Hong Kong, but nothing particularly uh, organized at this moment in time here with regards to uh you know uh, typhoon development and whatnot if we look at the atlantic here at the moment there is um there is lee and expected to uh, to see the central pressure drop back down towards 951 millibars here we've got margo also of course we've got the british isles up here as we play through the loop here um we are expecting to see margo become a hurricane according to the national hurricane center you can see here that the pressure drops as it uh, jogs a little bit to the north uh, in the gap here between this area of low pressure off the east coast of the United States and uh, Canada. We've also got the area of high pressure extending from, you know, to the west of the, the Canaries all the way up towards the UK and Ireland here. So as we play through this loop, keeping our close eye on those two uh, hurricanes at the moment here, of course, it's... Both of them are essentially moving northwards. And you can see here that the, according to the latest run of the GFS anyway, the system becomes post-tropical likely and moves onshore of uh, Nova Scotia, possibly just kind of staying off to the right a little bit here, moves up through Newfoundland here. And we also have Margo and Lee quite close together, if you notice here. And that takes, uh, Margo takes a, a kind of right hand turn. Now, notice here that we've got a trough, low pressure to the north and west of the British Isles here. We've got a northwesterly airflow around this area of low pressure, fairly cool, fairly unsettled conditions uh, up to Tuesday, the 19th of September. So, this is, of course, a long way out here, but we're keeping a very close eye on this system, Lee moving northwards and of course these two systems are driving tropical warmth up into the middle latitude pattern and it makes a very complex situation here but lee 
at, it looks as if it's going to kind of continue to move northwards, bringing uh, heavy snow in its western flank to parts of uh, Labrador and Quebec. And then, of course, it's all eyes on Margo. Now, I touched on this in yesterday's video, the possibility of a late month windstorm across the UK and Ireland. Now, the latest run of the GFS has that system moving south, but I wouldn't be surprised with time these models kind of show some interesting uh, scenarios with regards to the remnants of Margot making a bit of a blow on the UK and Ireland here. A lot of things to consider here. You notice here that we've got another system in the Atlantic moving to the north of the islands of the Caribbean here. And that system is expected, according once again to this latest run, a weakening phase making an approach on the outer banks of north carolina here so a lot of things to consider here and the tropics look as if they're alive and kicking and going to have a dictation on our weather during the second half of this month look at these areas of low pressure moving through but notice here that as we press towards the very end of the month big old area of low pressure of, of tropical origin uh, by this stage it would be post-tropical Massive 959 millibar area of low pressure becomes what uh, broader expands over the North Atlantic, and look at the UK and Ireland. We've got high pressure back in control of our weather for a small period of time. So this northward pr progress of tropical heat has a a a burn on the ridge trough couplet, uh, you know, and its movement and its behaviour, its strength. All is defined by what happens with the tropics and its northward progress here. So we've got a lot of things talking about at the moment here. Uh, looking at, uh, once again at the situation that was seen back in Hong Kong with the, the recent typhoon. We had a new record, 24-hour rainfall record in Hong Kong of 842 millibars, uh, millimetres, sorry, not millibars, uh, 842 mill uh, millimetres of rain at Stanley Station, south of the territory of Hong Kong, a new 24-hour rainfall record, 647.7 millimetres of rain in a 24-hour period at Hong Kong Observatory, the second highest accumulation in a 24-hour period. And then, of course, we factor in things like the Greek floods, the Madrid floods, and also the increase in rainfall um, due to whatever you want to label it. We have got an increased amount of water within the atmosphere globally at the moment here, in particular areas that were, uh, more so than others. We've got a lot of moisture over the Atlantic, as you can see here, much of North America, with the exceptions of southern United States, even uh, parts of most of South America, South America North America, Europe, uh, has a lot of moisture associated with it, and it is likely to be in response to the water temperatures globally being warmer than average here. Um, you can see that with this chart here, the you know warmer seas releasing more water vapor into the atmosphere, and in, indeed in turn, that then um, provides a warmer, um, you know warmer atmosphere, warmer land masses and whatnot here. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens as we progress through the autumn season, as I touched on in the previous video with regards to rainfall, and then as we move towards the winter season. Can we get a tripole over the North Atlantic? We'll talk about winter early this upcoming work week here. So stay tuned for that. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I'll see you again tomorrow with more. Bye for now.